start with a short opinion poll. How many of you have seen at least one cat video on the internet this week? Raise the hands, please. Well, a lot. It's good, they relieve stress. I've been a journalist for almost 20 years. The last years were the hardest, because people prefer to watch cute kitten videos instead of reading serious news. That means that advertising money goes to Facebook and Google, which profits on cute kitten videos. But for us, it means less money for quality journalism. During the last decades, traditional media has had two main sources of income, advertising dollars and subscription fees. But when the internet was born, this business model was destroyed. Advertising dollars from print went to internet, directly to Google and Facebook, where they can meet their client without intermediary newspaper. Here, you can see how the money shifted from traditional media to Google in a five-year period in the United States. Since 2004, more than $50 billion went to Internet to Google. Let's see how it looks in Latvia. In Latvia, 10 years ago, there were overall 108 million euros in advertising, and only 4% of them went to Internet. Now, 10 years later, the overall advertising budget is less, 78 million euros, and 20% goes to the Internet. However, we have no idea how much advertising money goes Google and Facebook in Latvia. Local businessmen with whom I spoke of the record estimate it being around 90 million euros. That money would be very useful if it went to the traditional media instead of cute kitten videos. So the big question is, how can media earn money to survive? The answer is, there is no one answer. It's time of experiment. Some try to find their niche like regional newspapers or economists or magazine here in Latvia. Big giants like Washington Post and New York Times experiment with paywalls. But all around the Europe and also United States, a new kind of media is born. Non-profit organizations that survive on grants and donors, for example, like ProPublica, which is the biggest non-profit in America, Media Part in France, Corrective in Germany, and Rebaltica in the Baltic countries. There are two ways how we are experimenting with our business model and creative ways of content delivery. We are an NGO, a team of two and a half people. Our annual income on average is 90,000 euros, and with this money we hire around 30 contract-based professionals a year, like video artists, um, photographers, and so on. Our income comes from donations, grants, and teaching fees. The main rule, the money should be clean. It's very special taking into account that we live in Latvia, which is money laundering country. So, we work on a topic from six months till a year. Last year, we did a research on inequality in education and it took to us 386 hours of research. A team of 10 people, we drove 1,208 kilometers and did more than 35 interviews. And then we gave all of this for free to the mainstream media to get huge audience in Latvia and also in the region because we translate our stories also in Russian and English. Our second area of experiment, content delivery. Recently I heard this very excellent saying, don't blame your competitor, learn from them. While researching fake news in Latvia, we noticed a young, sexy YouTube guy who, by blaming and shaming government, had collected more than 100,000 views on YouTube. We decided to do a video annotation for our article as a parody of this YouTube guy. Let's look at the video. <laughs> Thank you. 
Sveika, Latvija. Ja šajā laikā tev vēl tā sauc. Es ceru, ka jūs lai zvien turaties kopā. Lai vai kā, jūs prom viens no otra rautu. Sveika, Latvija! Ja šajā laikā tevi vēl tā sauc, vēlos runāt mūsu visu vārdā. Es zinu, ka tu to jau zini, bet gribu pateikt, ka mūs apzaga. Piedod par to, ka tu kliedzi, bet mēs nedzirdējām. Mēs lasījām ziņas un aforismus internetā un tās kaķīšu bildes. Tās ir tik mīļas! And at the end of this video, we taught people how to recognize fake news. It went viral. While working on education project, we wanted to highlight the Latvia's rural schools uh, that they offer a worse education as than schools in the city. It's sad, but that's what was shown by a PISA test, which measures education quality in 72 countries. To compete with kitten videos on social networks, we used beans to illustrate our point. Šeit ir rezultāti, kādi laukos bija pirms gandrīz desmit gadiem. Un šeit, kā bija Rīgā, kā redzam, Rīga pēdējos desmit gados ir pieaugusi, kamēr laukos izlītības līmenis ir tikai samazinājies. Protams, tas nenozīmē, ka visas lauku skolas Latvijā ir sliktas. Mums gan laukos, gan Rīgā ir skolēni, kur vidējās atzīmes ir kā startautiskajam līderim Singapūrai. Taču tie ir izņēmumi, un Latvijā tieši laukos ir liela daļa lauku skolu ar zemām sekmēm. We also used very effective method of showing before and after stories on a topic. In this video we showed how a physics teacher in two years changed teaching of physics. Uh, this was our most watched video and it's reached almost half a million people on Facebook. Šāda izskatījās Smārdas pamatskolas fizikas skolotāja Jāņa Čilipāna stunda 2014. gadā. Nekā īpašu. Skolēni sēž pa diviem, katrs pilda darba uzdevumu, skolotājs stāv priekšā un māc teoriju. Taču tad skolotājs Jānis saprata, ka šādu māciešanas metodu vairs nedara. Laiki un bērni ir mainījušies. Šāda izskatījās Jāņa fizikas stunda divus gadus vēlāk. And one more. On Latvijan Independence Day, uh, the member of European Parliament, famous Iveta Grigule, sent out to every citizen in Latvia a postcard with congratulations. She is very controversial lady because she had bought her seat through a massive advertising campaign, which consisted of many such spams I'm sorry, postcards. Uh, meanwhile, she ran away from each journalist she saw on her way. So, we decided to make a gift for her too. We made our own postcard, which said, Dear voters, since you elected me in European Parliament in 2014, I've done this, performed in plenary sessions like four, uh, four times, uh, signed motions three times, asked questions like seven, and for that I've received 351,000 euros. God bless Latvia. It went viral. Of course, we are not the only ones experimenting. Recently, the influential American media BuzzFeed attracted a million readers by Let's watch it. Like Rocky or something. Yeah. 678. 679. Oh, I see your person. So, can you believe it? They blew up a watermelon which attracted around, I was mistaken, not million readers, viewers, 
3 million viewers. Even CNN reported about how BuzzFeed blew up watermelon. Meanwhile, by attracting attention with blowing up watermelon and showing kittens video, they can earn money for uh, important articles like about Trump and his affairs with Russia. So this is what's a good point out of this. So, don't blame competitors. Learn from them. If you can earn money by showing kitten videos and to do in important investigations, do it. Do it even if your older colleagues disapprove. One of my greatest authorities in the media world is Newman Foundation for Journalism. It's a primary journalism institution at Harvard University. It offers the most prestigious fellowship programs for journalists. I tried, but never get in. Newman Fellows have collected, collectively won 101 Pulitzer Prizes. I'm following them on Twitter and reading every tweet. And then, one day, I saw this tweet. Yes, my path is right. Thank you.